Colin Kaepernick has a new series on Netflix called Colin in Black and White. I watched the series. I really, I've, I haven't finished it. I'm halfway through. I've really mm-hmm. enjoyed it. And you've seen it, Reese. Yeah. I want to play and for a Colin Kaepernick story, in case y'all don't know, outside of protesting and really uh, being banned, being that's someone who was canceled, literally mm-hmm. wasn't allowed to do the work that, that he could do uh, because he spoke out in the way that Paul Robeson mm-hmm. and Muhammad Ali, that's actually being canceled. But he's doing fine. He has money and he's doing other work outside of the NFL. But Colin Kaepernick uh, has a black parent and a white parent, but he was adopted by a white family and he was raised in California. And he has a really unique story of being a young black kid raised in a predominantly white environment. And I think a lot of people can relate to this story, whether or not you have a, a, a black parent and a white parent, just being black and being raised in a predominantly white environment and mm-hmm. what that, that does. And so it really talks about racial identity and how he's navigating these spaces and all these micro and macro aggressions that he's dealing with. And uh, there's a lot of history in, in between these, these, these uh, vignettes. His Afro is amazing. As Jennifer Lewis <laughs> said, my Afro was bigger than Angela Davis. I mean, his mm-hmm. Afro is epic. It's incredible. And it's funny and it's smart and it's witty. Mm-hmm. One thing the show didn't do, which I really appreciate, is it didn't go down the trite narrative of the tragic mulatto trope Mm -hmm. of no one accepts me. I'm falling in between. Nobody really, uh, you know, understands me. I'm caught between two worlds. Mm -hmm. The majority of people who I know who have different race parents, they aren't Sage Steele. Mm -hmm. You know, they aren't Tiger Woods. Uh, They are living, they are, they are black. Yeah. From Frederick Douglass to President Barack Obama to Bob Marley to Booker T. Washington. And I always say this being quote unquote mixed is consistent with the black experience. Mm -hmm. Now, although Vice President Kamala Harris has a black parent and an an Asian parent, South, South, South Asian. Yeah. Indian. South Asian. Yeah. Her experience might be different. But even even Vice President Kamala Harris, she is seen as a black woman. And she was raised as a black woman by her mom. Exactly. So racism doesn't check your parents at the door. Mm -hmm. When you think of Dante Wright, the young man who was killed by a police officer because of what allegedly an air freshener in the back of his car, Mm -hmm. he had a white parent and a black parent. Racism doesn't check to see which one of your parents are white. So there has been this narrative that I've really seen over the past maybe 10 years or so, this whole like, biracial butterfly narrative that, oh, you know, are they really black? It's just very strange. And I really appreciate, and then there are some quote unquote biracial people who don't want to identify as black, mm-hmm. like, like the, uh, the, the, the Creoles tried to do mm-hmm. the Creoles tried to say, oh, I'm not, I'm not black. We're Creole. We shouldn't have to abide by Jim Crow laws. And Jim Crow said, oh yes, you will. Right. <laughs> right. Because we, as black folks, we come in so many different shades And what I thought was so interesting about Colin Kaepernick's story is that it wasn't about him being some tragic mulatto trope. It was him seeing other people who looked like him that understood his hair, that understood his experience. I mean, in this series, his white parents are so delusional when he's experiencing explicit racism. And I've always said this, my mother was much different than them. My mother Mm -hmm. was would go off on my teachers. But at one point she made me move because I was living in Washington state for a minute, predominantly white. I left Philly, went to Washington state. And she said, you have to go back home to Philly because you have to be around your father. And there's a certain things that I can't teach you as a white woman Mm -hmm. that your father as a black man is going to be able to teach you because I was experiencing so much racism in my school, Mm. in my neighborhood. So I really thought it was brilliant and masterful the way that Colin Kaepernick and Avon DuVernay handled the story. Everybody's story is different. Mm -hmm. Everybody's story is different. But the majority of people that I know who are quote unquote biracial, which is not a racial identity, it's a racial descriptor, they are living and being seen as a black person. 
they might have light skin privilege. They, there might be other other things going on. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. But you know, when you think of Lenny Kravitz, you think of a, a black man. You know, mm-hmm. I, I can go on and on. So I was just so happy they didn't go down this old school Hollywood trope of the tragic, confused person who no one accepts because at the end of the day, you are more than likely still being seen as an N-word. Right. And the community that you're in is the community who understands that experience. So I thought it was really clever and I was really impressed. And I don't think I've seen identity unpacked in that way like I Mm -hmm. did seeing Colin and Black and White. What were your thoughts, Reese? Yeah, I agree with you completely. I didn't know hardly anything about Colin's background. I mean, I knew he was adopted by white parents, but I didn't know anything beyond that. Um, So it was incredibly compelling, really, TV. It's a coming of age story. It's more so rooted in the sports aspect. He played baseball. He played football. um, He was better at baseball as opposed to football. So there was an athletic part of it that I think even if you're not into the kind of social commentary, it's interesting from a sports perspective. And I'm not even a big sports person. And I found it very interesting from that perspective. But I was very relieved to see that it wasn't a, oh, look at the blacks being mean to the to the mulatto kid. You know what I'm saying? I'm not right, saying right. I'm a mulatto, so I'm not calling him a mulatto, but you know what I'm saying? Like, oh. you know how they try to always do that tragic biracial thing. It was like that in mixed ish. Mixed ish, that show. Okay, I never it was, watched it. it. Had, it had that narrative. I'm like, why are we doing this? This, this, yeah. is, not, this is not what happens. Go ahead. Yeah, that wasn't, I didn't, I was interested in that. But <laughs> in this one, it was a, I felt like it was a love letter of sorts to, to, to the black people in his life that helped hold him down. And I'm sure there's, these are fictionalized versions of the characters, right. but to the food and to the hair braiding and, and um, the camaraderie that he found with, you know, even in those moments like that, why these white people making me uncomfortable? I felt that in my soul because sometimes you ever be somewhere you're like, oh, it's a lot of white people up here. What the fuck's going on? I gotta find my exit plan. You know what I'm saying? And so I I really enjoyed that part of it. I feel like a lot of shows are doing the whole black people one on one. Let's explain little black shit to everybody else. Yeah. Know how black motherfuckers do shit, and that gets a little played out. But I think given that so many shows are doing that, I mean, the Wonder Years are kind of people like every show is doing that right now. I feel like it was done in a better way in this show. Um, There were still a lot of subtleties in there that, you know, like putting the salt on the food from his mom's food and then him grubbing on the chicken when he goes over, you know, so there are things that were still subtle. Some things were very like in your face, the whole auction block thing, you know, likening slavery um, or football to slavery. There were some very heavy handed parts, but I think overall, it was really exceptionally well done. It was triggering. It was very triggering because even though in the fictional show or fictional fictionalization of it, Colin really is oblivious. He's just, he's very oblivious to what's going on. He feels something is off, but it's not a, 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 an awareness that we as the viewer would have watching it. So it's probably more triggering for us than it was for yeah. him. Uh, but I still think it was important to present that perspective. I was so over his parents. Um, I don't think that they, I think they play dumb. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know what his relationship with, with his parents, but my unscientific, just my opinion based on what I see, I think the motherfuckers got a kick out of seeing these white people mess with him because they was acting too, oh, golly, gee, it. wicker. So I don't know what you're talking about, Colin. It was just, it was just the microaggressions were too much, but it was an accurate representation of what black people have to deal with. And so I thought he, they just did a masterful job from the beginning to the end. You know, Reese, what was triggering for me is that there was a moment where Colin Kaepernick, as a, as a teenager, mm-hmm. is driving his father's car. Mm. And, he's, and his father always drives his car. And he gets pulled over by the cops, and the cop kind of flips out on him and says, show me your hands, you know, before you give me your ID, you know, move slow, whatever, whatever. Yeah. And then at the end of it, this is a black kid with his two adoptive parents, two adopted white parents and a white police officer. You could tell on his face, he knows what happened, what's happening. He's sweating, he's breathing, he's afraid. And his parents say, good job. You just got out of your first ticket. Yeah. And I will tell you, that triggered me so much when I was a teenager in Washington, being the only black person. And the weird mental gymnastics you you get put through 
Mm. When you try to explain to somebody what just happened Mm. and they're like, well, you just got out of a ticket or for me, it wasn't driving, but it would be the way the the, lunch lady spoke to me Uh, or I'll never forget. I was working at a Kmart. Never forget it. And it was during the holiday season. Every line was packed except for my line. Hmm. And my boss, the boss said, go out to the front of the line and tell people, come over to your line. It's open. They just can't see it. They, they don't know your line is open. And if I saw this woman's face today, I would still be able to recognize her. I go to the first person I see. I say, hey, my line is open. And she goes, that wouldn't work now, would it? What, what wouldn't work? What's she talking about? Going into my line. I was the cashier. But I mean, what, what, I'm, I'm confused with what, what was her rationale? Cause you could just, cause you black, you can't get your, you can't, she can't go to a cat. What? I, I told my boss that, and, oh, you're just misinterpreting it the wrong way. Maybe we should just take you off being a cashier and you, you work in the stock room. Mm. So it's, it's moments like that where you're trying, I'm not being oversensitive. I'm not looking at it the wrong way. You just can't see it. You don't have the ability to see it, even when I break it down for you. So the ways, though, the way that those scenes were handled, I just thought it was so smart. Yeah. And so important. And it shows you the kind of culture war you could be in, in your own home or in your own school or in your own neighborhood. When you're trying to explain, hey, here's what's happening to me. But they're just like, why would you think that? Why are you even going there? So, yeah, I was, uh, I, think, I think people are, but see, I'm on the attitude. I don't explain racism to white people because they know what the hell going on. I feel like they'd be gaslighting you. People are not that stupid. They like to play dumb. Oh, I don't know. Ooh, dream, what are you talking about? But they be known, but they get a kick out of it, but they can't acknowledge other people because then that's acknowledging the way they act, which is messed up too. Mm-hmm. But I will say the other thing that was so crazy to me is Colin. I mean, he's this skinny like if you if you if you line up a group of black people, right, in terms of what you would think society would be like, oh, that guy isn't that isn't that threatening. You know, he would be like the last guy that anybody would ever think was threatening. He was a super skinny, he was a tall, lanky kid, you know, very fair skinned. Um, he had a little bit of a, you know, little curly fro. And when he had some peach fuzz, that was the issue. Anything he did, they act so threatened. He had to cut by- his hair. Yeah, I mean, just every, like they, it's, it just shows how sinister and how just, just ingrained anti-blackness is that even a, a hint of it is, 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 is an affront to people who are just blatant racist, you know what I'm saying? And that's what was crazy. It's like, well, damn, you know, this is what a light-skinned, tall, lanky, you know, star athlete is going through. He wasn't necessarily always a star, but you know what I'm saying? A, 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 at least a successful school athlete is going through. Imagine what kids who are darker or who are, you know, Absolutely. heavier or who are whatever go through. Like, I mean, we don't have to imagine that, but it's just crazy how even, cause a lot of people try to say that you ain't black stuff and they try to, they try to put blackness on a scale of, right. you know, how people experience racism, but it's such an insidious thing that any hint of blackness triggers it, triggers it. And it's, and it's, and it's, and it's, and it's, and it's detrimental you don't say, well, I'm only, you know, I'm, I'm light skinned. So it's not as detrimental to me. No, you're experiencing racism and it's harmful. I mean, he made it through it and it wasn't as harmful as it could have been to somebody who was more consciously aware of what was going on, but it was still detrimental to, you know, throughout the series. And, and that's just people's experiences. So I really wish you would get away from this whole, you ain't black, you, you know, whatever kind of shit. And it's, and, and I don't think that's the blackness. average black person. No, it's not. That's, yeah, that's it's, it's social not. media chatter. Yeah, but you're right. This whole, I, this whole idea of weighing blackness uh, degrees. I mean, look at Vanessa Williams. Both her parents are black. She has mm-hmm. she has blue eyes. You know what I'm saying? Like we are a mixed we are a mixed people because of miscegenation, because mm-hmm. of our history. We are a mixed people. I, I found it. And just speaking of the way that, um, you know, I think for me, the key thing is when it comes to, quote unquote, mixed people, do you or do you not have white privilege? Uh, are you white passing? That could be different. Now, yeah. if you are, and I'm trying to think of somebody who has a black parent who's white passing. I can't really think Jennifer of somebody. Jennifer Bills? Well, I don't know if she's- That's a good, she's, 
That, that's a good example. Yeah. That's a good example. Like she was able to pass in that movie Flashdance. Yeah. She was a young girl. So that's a really good example. And Jennifer Bills is not somebody who we really, and, uh, you know, not yeah, something really rooted in art. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I uh, what, what I thought, to, to your point, what was crazy to me is when um, <laughs> the the queen or the king or whatever, those folks in England, the, the, the royals, yeah. oh, they were yeah. worried how dark Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's child was going to be when Meghan Markle is so light, but they're thinking this child's going to come out looking like like wow like that's how fearful you are of blackness there's yeah. questions about with this light bright girl megan is a light light i mean damn near passing I, right. I i haven't seen her in person but that could be somebody might maybe maybe passing but there's still a fear well how mm -hmm. dark is this child gonna be mm -hmm. my god what, what what are these genes gonna do and just to your point just to your point that 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 there's there's that there's that fear yeah. And yeah, so I was just really uh, impressed by it. And, and I will tell you, um, everybody's experience is different, but I am, my experience and pretty much everybody who I know and what I've read from people who are, you know, public figures, I never felt like I was torn between two worlds. Mm -hmm. When I moved back home to Philadelphia, I felt so comfortable that I was even in the drug wars of Philadelphia, I felt so comfortable that I was in a space where I did not have to worry about race. Mm -hmm. There were plenty of folks who looked just like me at my school at Overbrook High in West Philly or at Kappa in Philly. I felt comfort. I was having so much anxiety mm -hmm. being in a predominantly white school. And I'm not saying that's the case for everybody, but, and there was also plenty of other Black folks at my school who had a white parent as well, too. Like, we are a mixed people. So the idea that both sides are rejected, that's just, I'm not saying that that may have been the case for Tiger Woods. I don't know. But what's funny about Tiger Woods is that the reason why he is who he is isn't because he's Asian. It's because he's the black golfer. Mm. If he was a white golfer having all that success, he wouldn't have been on the cover of Wheaties. He would have been on, on the on the cover of uh, had that big Nike deal. He got that because he was he was a rarity in his field. Mm -hmm. And then he kind of like does this weird dance with race. So Colin Kaepernick, shout out to him. I thought it was brilliant. Can I and, say one more thing, though? Please, Because I, I want people to know it's not a it's it's not a super heavy, like depressing show. I mean, no, no, 30, no. six 30 minute episodes. Funny. It has humor to it. You know, there's it's 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 light. It's heavy. It's it's a mixture of both. But if you're listening to this thinking like, oh, my God, it's going to be so. No. So it's not it's it's a very easy, breezy. Um, you know, it's, I, I binged it all in one day. I was Saturday. I don't, I don't feel like trying to find another movie every two hours. So I just binged <laughs> it, but it's a great, it's an easy show. You can watch it with your kids. It's kid friendly. Um, so, you know, don't be scared off by the tenor of our conversation from watching it, thinking it's going to be too heavy because it's not that heavy.